Amongst the largest and oldest of all diasporas, Indians have been venturing out for centuries. Yet, they remain tied to the land of their forefathers. It was great to know a little bit about the Indian culture and how people there live. And so, rediscovering their roots is important, for to know themselves, they have to know India. India, where yesterday, today and tomorrow exist right here, right now. It is into this land that no India participants come. The idea was that you would bring them in and give them an opportunity to A, see India for the first time in their lives and also feel India and absorb India in a manner more than just a tourist. The latest crop of No India participants come from across the seven seas. I'm from the United States, from South Africa, from the Fiji Islands, from France, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm from Suriname, from Lima, Peru. See you soon, India. New Delhi, the capital city that's also the heart of India. Here, the participants are smack dab in the middle of 21st century India. Their first stop, New Delhi's pride and joy, the metro. I've been on the metro in New York and in London, and this was by far the best experience we had traveling on their, on their trains. An experience that owes much to the metro's spiritualism-based management style, a uniquely Indian melange of technology and piety. After all, we are home to all the world's great religions, so where better to study our composite culture than the Jama Masjid? I've heard lots about this mosque and I'm so glad that I finally got to see it. A new day brings with it new destinations and the team gets all set to cross into the land of the five rivers. One of India's most ancient cities, Amritsar, encompasses in itself the most sacred of Sikh shrines, the Golden Temple or Harmandir Sahib. I really loved coming here and what I really love about it is that it welcomes people of all religions. As the peace of Harmandir Sahib seeps into the participants, they are able to fortify themselves to experience another of Amritsar's memorials, Jallianwala Bagh. This is where hundreds of men, women and children were killed in cold blood. Fired by patriotism and aflame with passion, everyone is well primed for the lowering of the flag at dusk at Vaga Atari, the only border crossing between India and Pakistan. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant to witness the border post closing. It's a leisurely start to the day with plenty of time to catch up with old friends and new. Today in the fields we saw some sugar cane, so it was good for me because it was a new experience. Oh my <laughs> and we like Punjab with all water. Chandigarh, famed for its urban planning, this city designed by La Corbusier is a jewel of modern India. The participants whiz past its avenues in search of Nek Chand's rock garden, made entirely out of scrap. Started in secret, this garden retains its sense of wonder just as Ranjit and company celebrate with some completely unexpected camels before heading east to Uttar Pradesh, home to Fatehpur Sikri, the dream capital of Emperor Akbar. With its sumptuous public buildings, grand terraces and expansive avenues, Fatehpur Sikri transports the No India participants to the court of the Mughals. 
but they've seen nothing yet until they experience Emperor Shah Jahan's ethereal monument to love, the Taj Mahal. Consider the epitome of the Mughal style, the Taj Mahal combines Islamic and Hindu architecture to create perfection. This was a very good experience and the Taj Mahal was really beautiful. Mumtaz is the luckiest woman in the world. Immersed in the sumptuous era of the emperors, it takes a readjustment to appreciate the ascetic age of independence at a museum that honors the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi. The deep sense of peace at the Gandhi ashram is only reinforced as the participants immerse themselves in yoga at the Aurobindo ashram. I thought the ashram was really an amazing place and the yoga practice really relaxing. Yoga is perhaps the most familiar Indian export to the world. But catching up fast is a much more modern export, Bollywood. The kingdom of dreams, where the Bollywood bug bites. Kingdom of dreams is exactly as it says, kingdom of dreams. This place is extremely astounding. It's, it's something that you see in Bollywood movies. From the glitz and glamour of Bollywood to the rarefied heights of India's highest office, a chance to meet the head of state, India's first woman president, Pratibha Devi Singh Patil. I welcome all of you. You will be the ambassadors of India and your, this visit will bind your country with India. The ceremonial aspects of the trip largely over, it's time to kick back and indulge in the truly fun part of a holiday. Souvenir shopping in Delhi's world-famous bazaars. I found many items that you can never find in Peru, so that's been lots of fun. With their magical three weeks in India nearly at an end, it's time to look back. I really like it to go to Punjab and to see uh, my roots. When I came to India, I liked it, and now I love it. Sad though they are at leaving, there is also comfort in knowing they're part of a larger family that transcends nations, the diaspora of India. Learning about India together has shown that we have similarities and differences, but together we are one.